all of the women I know would like to wear lingerie all of the time. Hello my friends and welcome back to Where Are They Now? In today's video, I'll be giving you the rundown on former Victoria's Secret CEO, Les Wexner. Let's dive in. Leslie Wexner is a native of Dayton, Ohio and attended the Ohio State University as well as served in the Air National Guard prior to his money making lifestyle. Les claimed the title of billionaire and businessman who once held the positions of CEO and chairman at limited brands until he stepped down to cut his ties with the company in 2020. During this time, Les was additionally doing philanthropist work for diverse charities, where he was also a significant donor to a few political campaigns. The Ohio State of University's Board of Trustees put in a vote to rename their medical center in honor of Les on February 10, 2021. They placed this order in motion because of the recognition of Les's services to the university of their medical center, as well as his leadership. The Ohio State University Medical Center is now known as Wexner Medical Center. But before we get into the lengthy brain power behind this mastermind empire builder, let's rewind a bit. Les's birth date is September 8, 1937, making him 84 years old currently. He was born to a Jewish family from Russian immigrants Bella and Harry Wexner. Les has one sister named Susan. His current house is 45,000 square feet and includes 30 rooms situated on 336 acres of land in New Albany, built in 1990. As for the latest report in 2021, his net worth amounts to an approximate value of 6.4 billion US dollars. His marriage to his attorney wife Abigail took place in their current home on January 23rd, 1993. They share four children together, sons Harry and David, and daughters Hannah and Sarah. Les's start in the apparel industry stemmed from working in his parents' clothing store. While they were relaxing on vacation, Les was analyzing how the clothing industry profited and lost margins on the women's clothing they were selling. His discoveries were that despite the higher priced clothing having a larger fee to them, they sold a lot less than the blouses the store was offering, which was said to have gone at a much quicker rate. He pitched his findings to his father, but rather than take his business perspective, Perspective into factor, his dad was simply uninterested in switching out his inventory. However, in 1963, Les was loaned $5,000 from his aunt to Jumpstart Limited. The store was branded as The Limited because of its initial focus on a limited amount of merchandise, which was quickly turned over and accumulated a higher margin drastically different from his parents' store. The Limited's first opening for its store was in Kingsdale Shopping Center located in Upper Arlington, Ohio, specifically brought up in a Columbus suburb. Les's parents soon found themselves closing their own shop a mere year later to joined forces with their son. By the year 1969, Les had taken Limited Brand Public and listed it under the name LTD. He's been given the longest serving CEO of a Fortune 500 company title since, as well as ranked 11th on Harvard's Business Review's Top 100 Best Performing CEOs of 2015. He soon moved into building retailing and marketing global sensations, which resulted in heavily popularized brands, including Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, Abercrombie & Fitch, and some branded under its parent company, BS Pink. His other retail chains include the Baby Scent brand of B&B, the White Barn Candle Company, as well as an additional lingerie company, Lazenza, and Henry Bendel. Reeling back to his wife, Abigail is the sole creator of the start of the Columbus Coalition Against Violence. She holds a board member position of several family friend catered organizations, which include the Center for Children and Family Advocacy, KIPP Journey Academy, the Wexner Center Foundation, KidsOhio.org, and Nationwide Children's Hospital Foundation. In 2012, Les hosted a fundraiser for Mitt Romney, where he made a donation of $250,000 to restore our future. Additionally, he made another 2015 donation to the right of $500,000, as this was in support of the 2016 Jeb Bush presidential campaign. In 2018, there was a report from the Columbus Dispatch, which announced Les's affiliation retirement with the Republican Party because of a change in its nature. Now, remember when I told you about his Victoria's Secret brand? Here's how it pertains to what we've learned so far. VS originally began as an MBA project from a Stanford graduate by the name of Roy Raymond. In 1982, Les's attraction to his sudden interest in the since acquired business was due to the uniqueness of high quality merchandise of the shop, as well as the Victorian era decor that had splashes of old touches, specifically through its featured red velvet sofas. Les soon took the reins of the company when he bought it for $1 million, and around the time of the 90s, it was already estimated at a worth equaling $1 billion. Victoria's Secret soon developed its popularity for its marketing tactics of using supermodels who were branded as angels. 
These angels would be featured in the future VS annual fashion shows, which were overseen by none other than the problematic Ed Razik. One thing that is most prominent from this topic, though, was the April 2019 incident when late billionaire and close friend of Les, Jeffrey Epstein, was accused of underage trafficking. His arrest came shortly after in July 2019 on charges of the same degree. As for the exploration of the Hulu three-part docuseries, Victoria's Secret, Angels and Demons, Les is described as a true businessman at heart, whose sheer corporate power and business savvy ways paved the way for his mall domination all throughout America. His focus on eventually taking over the retail industry pointed him right in the direction of being the fast fashion inventor of the US. But since Victoria's Secrets boasted revenues in 2018 of $8.1 billion, things very slowly but surely started to plummet. The once mainstream company home to the standard of sexiness soon struggled with relevancy in the day and age of social media, their standards, and the sudden but necessary movement of Me Too. After nearly 60 years of business in 2020 for Les, he retired from his CEO and chairman of L Brands roles and later left the board the following year. By doing this, Les broke all his ties with the company he once founded in 1963. But not all of his dues have been paid, in line with his legacy and everything he once worked extremely hard for, being deeply damaged by his attachment to Jeffrey. Most recently, the Angels and Demons documentary dove deep into Les's personal relationship with Jeffrey and examined how their bond played a role in Jeffrey's underage young woman's ring network. While his ties to other big names including Donald Trump, Prince Andrew and Bill Gates have been at the forefront of media attention in the past, the connection between Jeffrey and Les was super tight lipped for quite a while. It definitely strikes as odd why they were never revealed to be close friends until after Jeffrey's arrest on conspiracy and trafficking charges, which exposed the mess that quickly unraveled. Jeffrey passed away in prison the same year he was locked up where his body was discovered in his cell later and was announced as a but before this, for almost two decades, Jeffrey was Les's money manager. No one knew how close they were prior, but Les reportedly removed himself from Jeffrey's life when Jeffrey pled guilty and was granted a heavily criticized lenient plea deal. With no new insight from Les, we're left with far more questions than answers. Les has shut down multiple interview requests from filmmakers, so how do we figure out why Les continued to engage in business and personal affairs with Jeffrey despite all the red flags? While the two who people describe as sharing one brain were said to be thicker than thieves, Jeffrey was known for being a manipulator where many have detailed he had a certain way of charming anyone to do or say anything he pleased, and the two leveraged off each other in their time. The former CEO of VS's Direct had detailed in the docuseries how she originally thought the relationship was transactional, due to Les's money that Jeffrey wanted and Jeffrey's smoothness and glamour that Les was seeking. But apparently Les remained a New York Society outsider aside from Jeffrey's promise to help him, all while Jeffrey climbed the ranks to become rich and powerful in regards to his connection with Les. Jeffrey was given Les's power of attorney role in 1991 which handed him complete control over all of Les's assets. With this he had the ability to sign checks, buy and sell property, and borrow money on behalf of Les. Reportedly there wasn't one part of Les's empire that Jeffrey could not oversee. So all we ask is why? Why allow Jeffrey to have that much control over his life? Well, because Les made claims of handing Jeffrey his money making position as nothing more than a strict business decision. That's why. But it wasn't really only business because Jeffrey was also heavily involved in Les's personal life. For example, Jeffrey emceed at Les's 59th birthday party. Jeffrey also urged him to cut off anyone he wasn't cool with. Apparently Jeffrey's encouragement even went as far as Les's relationship split with his mom who was sued through Les's foundation to stop her from taking Jeffrey's place on the board of his charity. But yet, Les has denied on several occasions ever knowing of Jeffrey's former allegations, both while he was under him as an employer and after he wasn't. According to the company, Jeffrey never actually worked for them prior, like many people have insisted, and Les was never implicated for his connection to the former billionaire as others were. Loads of civilians call for the speculated deep and further to be taken, especially because after Alice Arden's 1997 allegation, Les was still publicly supporting Jeffrey. The Alice accusation in question harbored by Jeffrey posing as a talent scout agent in his decades of working for the lingerie brand. Of course, he denied taking part in this as well. However, when Alice filed a police report against Jeffrey with claims of assault and manhandling, things took a horrible turn. Alice detailed Jeffrey's invitation to a Santa Monica hotel under the guise of working under the company before he allegedly took advantage of her. 
This later drew direct lines to his 2002 allegations of Jeffrey paying younger, mostly underage girls to recruit other girls of the same nature. An anti-trafficking advocate stated in the docuseries how his ability to engage in these crimes was all because of his position as Les's financial advisor. Jeff was also accused of assaulting a painter in Les's Ohio State he was also living in at the time. Previously owned the limited plane that Jeffrey bought from the company for a reduced price, often referred to as Lolita Express, was home to another claim of alleged victims being taken advantage of. So are we starting to see a pattern here? In a newer twist of events though, Les stepped forward in 2019 to admit that Jeffrey also played him, where he was said to have stolen over $46 million from his former billionaire boss. But weirdly enough, despite his claims, Les never pressed charges for misappropriation of funds, which cracked a hole further on his motives. Especially from the businessman who has been labeled litigious all his life. Makes zero sense, I know. The documentary has built a case of its downfall being a factor of many, but mainly of Les's inability to rebrand when the Me Too movement came about. It paints an incriminating picture of Les's previous CEO position, where he clearly turned a blind eye to all the harassment and assault claims at his company, not even just limited to Jeffrey. He also seemed to ignore the misconduct allegations of VS's former long-running chief marketing officer, Ed Razik, who quit after the disastrous Vogue interview where he made absurd statements regarding transgender models. Former executives alleged that they spoken with Les about Ed's apparent behavior of inappropriately touching the models while they were in little to nothing, attempting to kiss them without consent, and demanding they sit on his lap with no reciprocations. Ed had denied these claims as well and told Times in reference to the Angels and Demons filmmakers pressings that he would not dignify these insane allegations with a response. The now released series gave great details of Jeffrey's scary ability to once creep around in plain sight with Les's help, whether Les knew of his wrongdoings or not. Les concealed his relationship with Jeffrey for years and instead of giving answers he single handedly ruined all the work he's built into his now clouded fortune. Now that is it for today's WATN. If there are any other Hollywood hotties you'd like to see in our next rundown, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and don't forget to let us know what your thoughts are on today's Where Are They Now video. This was your host Michaela who had the pleasure of delivering today's update on your favorite celebrities and I'll see y'all in the next one.